about what happens when your parents stop paying. <laughs> right? Um, how, how to build marketing sponsorships and hopefully your way to the top. There we go. All right, so who am I? Patricia Da Silva. I own uh, Heels Down Media, which is a media marketing company. You might have heard of Heels Down Magazine. Uh, my family owns Eco Gold, the saddle pads that uh, you got for the clinic. So that's how I started. I started there. And then I created my own media and marketing business. So I know a lot about building a brand from scratch, but also sponsorships on both ends. Now I consult with people on the writing side, how to get sponsorships. Okay, why are we here? Why are we here? Like you, you know the sport costs a fortune. Probably the parents go, yes. So the way that you can get to the top, unless you have an unlimited amount of resources, but that's not the case for most people, is to get sponsorships or to get funding or building a syndicate for your horses or getting other people to help you in your journey. It, how many people here would like to do this as a, as a profession? Okay, several. As a writer, your trade is yourself, like that's your brand, but you kind of need to start separating and viewing the business side as almost a separate brand from you. So if you look at, I don't know, Kim Kardashian or someone like that, they have what they do in their private life could be private, but then they, they build themselves into a brand almost as a business. And that's what gets you sponsorships. That's what gets you partnerships. So if you start from very early on to seeing yourself, okay, this is my brand, and then this is what I do with my friends, it's a separate thing, okay? So it's on social media is the best example. If you wanna pursue this as a profession from day one, you need to see yourself as a brand like a coffee brand or something like that, as a dressage rider. So the first thing when we talk about brands is really determining, first, what do you do? So what do you do? You ride horses. What do you do? So you're a rider, you go to school, you know, that's fairly easy for you to figure out because it's an action. Then the next question is why? So why do you ride horses? Because what do you love about it? You love the horse? You love the sport. Do you like to compete? Yeah. yeah. So knowing it's a very important aspect of building, and you go, how does that relate to getting a sponsorship? For me, that's a very important. What's your purpose? Why do you do this? And knowing exactly why you, you do this. Usually, you love horses like obsessively. <laughs> Most of the you know, professionals, they love being around them. Like I was just interviewing Isabel Worth and I asked like, what, how are you so successful? She says, I love horses. I said, what do you love about them? She says, everything. <laughs> you know, she loves training them, she loves competing them, she loves everything. Um, so that's your purpose. It's very easy. If you love a sport, there you go. You love doing it. And then once you know why, then that's the third question is, who are you? Like, what are your values? What are your strengths? Animal welfare could be an important value. You go, I want to compete, but I want to make sure my horse is sound. I want to make sure there's some values that you need to know that you say, this is who I am, and it's part of your brand. Like, for example, Erin, like, it's very important to her, yes, because we've done this exercise with you, she says, a happy horse. I want to have a barn of happy horses. So, you know, that differentiates the rider that maybe, you know, has the same values, but you have to put them out there. I'm not just a dressage rider. I'm a dressage rider that loves these things. And also, I have these values. Okay? So that is, and it could be your strengths. I'm really good. I also do show jumping. You know, that could be something that could differentiate you. What are your strengths? Or you're, I'm very good on social media. That could be a strength. So find out what your values are, what your strengths are. So these are the basic, basic things. Before you even get to the sponsorship, you have to do this exercise. And it's called the brand DNA. So it's the who, 
you are, the why you do it, and the what you do. So the what is kind of the surface, why, and then um, who you are as a person. And then it creates the brand DNA, which is the, the essence. Then everything that you're going to do has to align with that brand DNA. So that means that there's an authenticity in your partnerships. If you're into happiness of the horse, maybe there's a brand that has that as their first value. And you go, well, this is the perfect partnership because our values align. Does that make sense? I see people saying, yeah. Okay. Now the next step is like, okay, how do I get money? <laughs> I'm awesome, but then how do I market myself? And that's the next step. So social media, how many people use social media here and there? Okay, so it's fairly easy for you. That's why I say first step, like do what you already know how to use, but now you're going to do it in a different way. Okay, what, what platforms are you on? Instagram. And you're on Instagram? Facebook. You're on Facebook as well? On, who's on Twitter? That's pretty good. Okay. So you're pretty... Are you on YouTube? Do you have videos that you put, post on there? So you have a good knowledge of different um, social media. What I find, especially with the younger generation, they love Instagram and they kind of forget that sponsors, like a lot of big brands that you see, it's not the owner necessarily that's managing the Instagram account. Sometimes it's an intern, <laughs> whereas most grown-ups are on Facebook. So that's where you want to be present and interacting, um, again, as your brand. All right, so be strategic in the way you use social media. Number one is be where your, spon your potential sponsors or partners are. Like if you're on Snapchat, chances are they're not there. Facebook, definitely most horse people are on that. It could be Twitter. It could be LinkedIn. <laughs> Be professional, but human. I think that a lot of people, they're too much about results when they do well and they don't necessarily post when they don't have a good show. Be human. I think it's okay if uh, you didn't have a good show or you didn't have a good result to still post a photo and say, I'm proud of my horse. We tried our best. It wasn't our best show. Uh, but you don't have to be perfect. I'm always wary of people that have you know, such a perfect... Instagram that you're like, these people can't be real. <laughs> so don't be afraid. You can be human. You could have fun if you have a good sense of humor. You know, as long as it's professional, be human. Uh, very important, assume everything is public. Even on text, like be very, very careful of what you post online at all times. Like assume, if you assume someone's always watching, uh, someone could take a screenshot and that even goes for the, for the grown-ups. <laughs> like it's something sometimes we forget with text and messages, but I think if you need to really have a, a hard conversation with someone, pick up the phone and call them and talk to them in person, but do not put anything that um, you wouldn't like other people to see. Don't put that in writing. Very important, comment and tag brands that you already use. Even if you're not a professional yet and you can't, if you don't have sponsorships, you still use products. Tag them on it because they'll see it. And once you come ask, they'll remember you. So start doing that. I can't stress enough the power of good photography. If you have a friend who is like an amateur photographer but takes good photos, invite them over at your, at your barn. Take nice photos of yourself. And don't post like crappy, like even cell phone photos could be good, but make sure the lighting's good. <laughs> But if you can, if you want to become a professional writer, find someone that could take nice photos and do photo shoots at your barn. I think a lot of people don't invest in, in good photography and it makes a difference. It looks professional, it looks put together. Very important too is we forget now with social media to have a website. So if you want to become a professional writer, the earlier that you can have a, a website, and nowadays, like you buy a domain, it's $19. <laughs> Buy your name, like suzysmith.com or, you know, Suzy Smith dressage. Then you own your name. Find someone that can help you. I'm sure in school, there's people who know how to. How many, have, has anyone gotten a website? One? Okay. So if I'm a sponsor and you contact me, um, that's the first, I'm going to look at your social media, but the website as well. And I think 
it's a good place to list your bio, who you are, the results from each show, and any news that you have and sponsors that you have gotten. Because as a junior yeah. or a new writer, it's going to be moved to the website. Like, without looking kind of at the like, um, You think it looks pretentious? Yeah. It depends. Like, if, if, if you're at the point where you go, okay, I'm going to ask for sponsorships, that's the moment where you need a website. You're professionalizing your career. What's the benefit to the sponsor? To the sponsor? Yeah, how are you going to market yourself so that they figure they're getting something from it? Yeah, it's coming. But you know, if you have a website, the sponsor wants that because it's, you know, if you're constantly putting your news there, you, people go back to your website, and then if you have all your sponsors listed with the links to theirs, then it's like they click directly from that, and they can go and purchase their products to their website. But I think that the moment, like when you say, oh, do I, do I look pretentious? The moment that you're ready to ask for sponsorships, that's when you need to be professionalized. And it's not pretentious. It's like, this is a business, and this is a tool that I have in my business. But I think it's important um, to have that. Because then you list them all, and, you know, if they say you're pretentious, you know, hey, you're getting sponsorships. Like, like there's always people who are going to criticize and find faults. But I'm telling you, as, a, as someone who works in the industry, if, I, if you contact me and you contact me and you have a website, that's a plus for you. Because I'm going to check it. I'm going to check all your social media. I'm going to check, you know, all the things. We're going to do due diligence on, you know, unless it's someone that it's a sponsor that isn't doing their job. But I check everything. And if someone has a website, oh, they're professional and they're going somewhere. Uh, rather than, oh, like here's my Instagram page where I put photos of my dog. Yeah. Websites all the time to find various people, and there's a tremendous number of websites that I've gone to that you cannot find out where that place is. Yes. Is that a good thing? No, it's bad. I mean, I'm, I'm running into it all the time. Horse shows are the worst. Sorry, but you don't know. You know what? Do you want? Are like stables. And stables. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's. I that's not. Might be some reason. No, it's because they don't know. They don't. They don't. They didn't go to my presentations. <laughs> no. The problem in this industry is that people want to ride horses. They don't want to do this stuff. And they just, they half-ass it, you know? It's like either get someone to help you or, I don't know, like find someone who knows how. Like, like you wouldn't ask me to train your horse. But I feel that in marketing, people don't see that. But if I say, well, how are you going to finance your next Grand Prix horse? Uh, you know, if you have, if you build it, that's why it was important. I flew for this because, you know, you're at, a, a, at an age where you, like social media, you, I'm sure you get it. So the earlier that you hear this, that marketing is going to help you achieve your writing goals. It's not just like, oh, I need a website because I need a website or I need this. You know, they haven't even like to put together a syndication package for your horse, like it's the same system. What does the person receiving your package want to know? And if you're going to a stable, you want to know where it is. <laughs> uh, you like you put the map. You put a. You want a phone number. Like how many websites don't have a, a phone number? Like where you can call. <laughs> You know, the, the things that people want to know the most, like, what do you want to know about a show? Like, when I'm checking a website for a show, I want to know when the classes are, results. <laughs> How many websites have that on the home page? When the classes are, results. No. It's like, our show, show, blah, 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 blah. Here are five photos. What shops are going to be on site? Like, how many? I could go on and on. But... <laughs> You know, it's like what you have to think, what does the other person want to know? Because you already know, like, it's not for you, the website. It's for other people. All right. So the thing that you can start right away is standing out because you're in competition with other people. So if I look at a writer to sponsor, if you, when we go back to the strengths and weaknesses, if you can't write, don't do a, a blog. Uh, but if you can write and love to write, if you 
have a website then start blogging and saying well I went to my show last week and blah 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 and uh, start writing and start sharing that on social media if you can. Uh, if you can't write then vlog, do little videos maybe after every show or before you go or you know after a few lessons you take a, your cell phone and you just film and say something or show your horse or and then you post that on YouTube, you can post it on Facebook, Instagram, if they're short. I mean, someone who vlogs regularly, that's a, that's a big plus because you're going to start getting a following. Uh, media, find something interesting about yourself. Maybe you have a local newspaper in your area and like pitch them an article. Go, hey, I have a new horse. I'm from this area and I'm going to these championships or you know something interesting that you can find or my horse is related to this other horse that won something or if uh, you know you're recovering from an injury and you succeeded at this uh, this event well, who knows maybe they'll write something about you and that establishes your credibility if someone has had like five articles written about them um, that's a big plus, and it's something you can put on your website. So the more credible, because you're young, you're like, okay, what can I do, one, to create content to uh, start getting followers, but also you want to appear legit. So the first step, even before we get to the sponsors, this is the most important. You're going to do all the things that I said, and it's investing in yourself. It's investing in your brand. When you ask a sponsor, you're asking them to invest in, in you. So you're going to do it first. Does anyone already do any of that stuff? Do you blog or vlog? No? So it's all new? Okay. So then once you've done that, next thing is preparing your pitch. So that's what your question was, how to go to the sponsor. So you're going to make a list of what you offer. So hopefully if you vlog, blog, you know, been in the media, have a website, or active on social media, you already you know, you already have something to offer. Before that, if you do zero things and you just go to sponsors saying, hey, horse shows are expensive. I need stuff. <laughs> Would you support me? Then you're like, okay, what, what do you have? You have nothing to offer me. So you're going to do all the things before. Then second part is going to be cost and benefits. So you're going to say, well, I need like clothing. Okay, so maybe if you give me like $500 of clothing, you get this in exchange, like finding what level of sponsorship you would, it would be reasonable, and then what they get for that. Because of course, you know, if there's a sponsor that gives you more, like they get more exposure, etc. And then the third is the most important, it's ROI. Have you ever heard of return on investment, ROI? So that means how much money you're going to make them. That's ROI, it means return on investment. And it's basically how much you can make them. So it's the return on their investment. So if you can, if you already have a sponsor, let's say, um, you said, look, I partnered last year with a local blanket company and I help them sell five blankets. That's ROI, that's return on investment. They gave you a blanket and five of your friends because you wore it on your horse or you took photos or you did this and that and you were able to get them sales. That's a real return on investment. It could be uh, for, if you're a um, trainer, it could be look, I took five students last year. They all went to championships. You know, it's like they paid me for training, but they achieved these goals. So if I ask you, okay, what am I getting in return? You have to be able to answer that. There needs to be a return. Like brands are not going to sponsor you just because you're good. What brand wants, it's mostly just being like, seen? No. So what are the like, what are the yeah. Things? That get, that's my next slide. They're, they don't just want to get seen, especially not now. Like maybe five, ten years ago, maybe that was enough. But the market that you're coming into, it's not enough. So brands look for these things. 
number one and the most important, if you can get them that, that's the holy grail. They want sales. They want to grow their business. So it's, it's like almost a, a win-win by partnering. If you're able to bring them actual sales or, you know, saying, look, this is my influence. Or if you're a trainer, all my students in my barn bought CWD saddles or, you know, whatever other brand because I, I have it and I love it and I recommend it. And therefore, I can get other people interested in the product. That's the number one. Uh, two is influence. Can you influence a bunch of other people? You know, it's not just being seen. Can you influence other people? Oh, you posted this photo. I got five phone calls to see if I had this color. Uh, it goes back to being seen. Yeah, but it's more than being seen. It's being seen, liked, and being credible enough. Like if I, there's a lot of influencers that you like their photos, but you're not necessarily going to buy. You know, they have no influence on you. Like, do you see a difference? Because they're not, it's not people that you respect you're necessarily. Partnering with them, so then you're going to help sell their product. Or... Yeah. But as a, I think that as a writer, the more you could have that influence. Uh, and that's why it comes from professionalism. It's also from the authenticity. If it's someone that changes sponsor every five minutes, you got uh, these per people you know, whoever gives them free stuff, they're going to talk about it, you know, but it's like, I love this saddle company and this is my favorite saddle and I've had it for five years and they're comfortable. They're great. I love their customer service. You truly, truly believe in it. And then you communicate that to other people. And they, that's how you get influence is because, oh, I know like Susie's really, really picky with this, but she really loves this brand and therefore, and I know that she wouldn't just say that. It's true. So that makes you more credible. Reach. So if you have 1 million followers, <laughs> uh, that's better than 10. If you're known in a small circle, that's less good. If on social media, if your YouTube videos are widely seen, that's, that's a, a big value. Then fourth is saving. If you have a talent, if you're a photographer or if you have some other talent, you go, look, you don't need to hire, a, you know, I'll do your photos, they, you know, or they want content for their own social media pages. So if that can save them time, if it can save them money, that's also something that uh, you should consider. It's not just the sales. If you could save them money, that's good. Or you go, well, you know, I'll bring this to the horse show with me. You know, you're saving them time, money. See how, how of service you could be. Five would be, for example, to look for a brand who's big in the show jumping world and bring them into dressage, for example. You go, hey, you're not currently in dressage. Maybe I could help you with that. Whereas if you already go to brands that are very, very dressage oriented and they already sponsor every rider, then you're not you know, you're like this big uh, little fish that is not really going to do much. But if you can help them reach a new market or you find a company in Sweden and they're not in Canada, you go, hey, I love your product. You should totally, here's like five uh, business cards of uh, retail stores where you could sell and things like that. Help them get new markets. That could be interest to them. So when you approach businesses, Number one, approach businesses that, of products that you actually like and use. Don't fake it till you make it. Like actually like the product, be a, a client first. Because you get a lot on Instagram that you can go, hey, I want to represent your product. Like, have you used it? No, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> That's not good. So things that you actually like and use and can recommend to a friend. Two, for which you can make a difference. Like we said before, if the, you can help them grow a new market, if you can actually make a difference. So if you're starting out and you're a junior, s start with a small brand that maybe has no, no sponsored riders because then you can make a difference for them. And then professionally. So approach businesses in a professional manner, like don't send them a text or something like that. Even like Instagram. Has anyone approached brands on Instagram? No? Okay, good. If you do say, hey, I really like your brand, like who's the person I should email? 
and then get the actual person that uh, does the sponsorship. But usually email, email, actual mail. I've gotten packages in the mail. Like no one sends anything in the mail anymore. So Aiden Euler, who's uh, sponsored by Nike, she actually mailed a package to the CEO of Nike. And that's how she got sponsored. So mail could be a good way. I like to talk to people. So, you know, email and say, when is a good time to set up a call? They might say no, but it looks professional. And then you call them on the phone. Hey, I really love your products, blah, blah, blah. Because no one calls anymore. So if you can call, you're going to stand out. And then meet in person. Like you go to horse shows. A lot of businesses are there. It could be even a business that is not an equestrian business. It could be a local store. It could be anything. And then just go there and talk to them in person. Nothing replaces human interaction. So meeting in person, a phone call, you're talking to a human. Whereas an email, like you can ignore that. Like sponsorships is a process. If you want to go to Young Riders, you'll have to fundraise as a team. You'll hear lots of no's or you'll hear nothing. Sometimes people get, oh, I've tried it and it doesn't work. So it's not worth it. I think it's, you have to think of it like writing where it's a process and it's not easy. But if you do all the things that I say in, you know, step by step and OK, let me build and you continue on. I guarantee that, you know, someone is going to say yes but you can't just give up or you can't do it for a week. Marketing is like brushing your teeth. I like saying that because people go, oh, I have no time. I don't have time. <laughs> like how many people brush their teeth? Everybody. And do you go, oh, I don't have time. No, oh, well, <laughs> no, you just take, you know, you just do it naturally. So I think marketing yourself, if you're able to do it every single day, no, and thinking, okay, I'm going to post a photo, I'm going to do this, I'm going to send five emails today. Or you're going to interact with businesses on social media. You don't need to post, but you can comment, okay, I really love these gloves, th these helmets, these da, da da So go on those pages and go every time they post something, not in a spammy way, in a weird way, but go, oh, this color is really cute. And then they see you like Stephanie, 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 Stephanie. Then when you call them, hey, it's Stephanie. You go, oh, yeah, it's you who's like been, uh, you know, sharing our, our content. Like that's that's a good thing. And no one thinks and these things, no one's doing it like no one is doing. It. So if you do any of these things, you're ahead by like 99 percent of everybody else. Because everyone like waits till the last minute, they send a sponsorship package and they go, okay, I need a sponsorship. Okay, when's your show? In two weeks. You're like, forget it. Like if you want to go to Young Riders in three years, you should be doing all this now. Yeah, like brushing your teeth all the time, every single day. You have to be consistent. That's why you don't have cavities when you go to the dentist, because you brush your teeth all the time. It's not just, oh, I brush them in September 2017. No, it's, you do it every day. So that's, it's, it's good hygiene. So you need good business hygiene. You need consistency in your brand. You've established your values. So that's what you have to put forth in the message, in what you say, and in the work. It's work. Writers don't like doing it, but it's important. They go, oh, why can't, doesn't anyone support me? And you go, even for owners, I've had riders say, hey, I really would like owners for my horses. And they go, well, how many hours per week do you put aside for that task? They go, oh, I don't have time. Well, then, you know, if you go, well, if you don't train for the horse show, how do you think you're going to do at the horse show? Oh, well, that's different. No, it's the same. It's, it's the same principles. It's like, you know, you're preparing for a competition and the competition goal is to get the funding that it's going to get you to your, to your dreams. So you have to put in the work. Takeaways, invest in yourself. You have to prepare your marketing campaign like you do a horse show. Keep going because as you saw, it's a process and it's not something you do just a week or two weeks before you need the funding. If you need funding for young riders next year, you should start now. The earlier that you can start, the better it is.
because you're building. If you invest in yourself, prepare, keep going, don't give up. When people say no, you'll get the win. And then that's it. And you can find me heelsdownmedia.com. I have a newsletter that comes out every Tuesday. It's called The Move Up. If you need some motivation for your, for your business goals, every Tuesday comes out. It's free. It's called The Move Up. That's how you get happiness. <laughs>